Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today I have my co-host, Natalie Bohm. We've been doing a lot of work together and we created a partnership where Natalie is a, the part she owns and she is the founder of Defeating Epilepsy and she runs the organization in California and it is worldwide, globally and nationally. She helps people with epilepsy and we thought it would be great with my experience and her experience to put it together as one and help you guys cope and live with epilepsy so you could have a healthy, ha healthy, happy, and good, good life that is productive. So today we thought it would be a great idea. We were talking about it to talk about epilepsy and how to avoid the stress from friends and family during the holiday season. Now, as you know, a lot of times, sometimes, you know, holidays can be really happy and they can be fun, but they also could be stressful. And sometimes it can be stressful when you know you're getting together with friends and family that might, you know, get under your skin a little bit or might be too, let's say, opinionated and they don't really know what you're going through, but yet they have an opinion and a solution and it can get frustrating. Don't you think, Natalie? Oh, very much so. And I and I can say from um, my life's experience, I have a lot of, you know, family and friends who I know they have good intentions and everything. But when we get together, even something as simple as, oh, did you take your medicine this morning? You're going to be okay today. I know they mean good by that, but I don't want to get mothered. It's like if we're going yes. to lunch or we're meeting for a holiday or something, you know, at this stage in the game, I, I've got this. Yeah. And that's the one thing I found is um, family, they mean well, but they have a history of micromanaging or taking a parent role. And I think the reason it aggravates me and I had to learn to um, set healthy boundaries was, you know, my parents in the 1980s didn't get the support they needed from the neurologist. They didn't suggest other things such as um, a child psychologist or some really structured care plan yeah. for um, my parents and I to have coping skills. And right. that turned my parents into helicopter parents. You know, mm -hmm. they just, the thing was, keep me in the house, know where I was at all times. That's oh the only gosh. way, you know, rather than the yeah. what if, what if. And that's why I found um, being with family, the holidays are special events. They've gotten a lot better. But I mean, even when I went away to college, it's, did you take your medicine? Have you seen the doctor? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And it's like space. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you need healthy boundaries, even okay. if you're dealing with a chronic illness. You know, I, I feel the same way. You know, a lot of times, you know, I'll have family members, you know, they will do the same thing. Did you take your medicine? You know, are you okay? You know, how are you feeling? And, you know, basically, you know, it's not like how I'm feeling. Like, you know, I woke up in the morning, you know, or do you have the sniffles or, you know, what's going on? It's basically, you know, do you think you'll have a seizure? You know, I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm good today. You know, I, I feel really good today. You know, I took my medicine and, uh, you know, or I'll have people, you know, some, a lot of times, you know, sometimes I'll go into my head and I'll think about things because I just, tend to get ideas. I'm a Pisces. I'm creative, always thinking, thinking, thinking. And sometimes I, <laughs> I, I go into my head and I'm thinking about something and I might look like I'm gazing into space. And then people will, especially my kids, my kids will get nervous. Like, mom, are you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> Yes, I'm okay. I'm just thinking of something, you know, and it's like, it, you know, I'm, I know they mean well, it can get frustrating. And then I've been to family events and they do the same thing, you know, and, uh, you know, it can be frustrating. And then also you do have those annoying family relatives that are just, you know what? They're family. You love them because they're family. But if, if, it, if it was really up to you, you know, you would probably keep your distance if they weren't family, you know, and exactly, they, you know, they tend to get really underneath your skin. They may say stupid stuff or they just might be just mean and cruel. You know, you do have those family members that are just not happy with who, who they are. It's their own issues. It's not your issue. It's not because of you. It's their own issues that they're dealing with, but they may take it out on you through their own behaviors and it could get stressful. You know, I've had one, oh, yeah. you know, I had one family member that was just, you know, plain out nasty to me for no reason, you know, and just the words she said, the things she said, she got me so worked up. I ended up having a seizure and that oh, could have been goodness. avoided because, you know, so I learned after that, you know what, I'm not going to let people, family members, friends get to me. If I'm in an event, and I, you know, someone upsets me by what they say or what they do, I have to learn how to cope with it in a productive 
way. I can't yes. let it stress me out because in the long run, I'm the person who's going to hurt, not them. You know, oh, I'm absolutely. Going to have the seizure. I'm the one who's going to have the after effects. I'm the one that could get hurt. I I don't want to be that person. So, you know, for me, I I I learned a technique where I kind of let things go winner out the other. And I do that by not focusing on negativity. If someone's negative, I just shut them off. I learned how to just not pay attention to them and focus on other stuff, other stuff that makes me happy, positive things are, that are going around in the room. And I just close my, myself off to that area. And if I could walk away from it, I walk away out of the room and I just leave, you know, and just leave. And, you know, also taking a deep breath. You know, I learned that sometimes you could be in a stressful, you know, um, event and, you know, someone's really bothering you. And you could use quiet meditation by using breathing techniques and just slowly breathing in, breathing out, in through the nose, out through the mouth, you know, very quietly, subtle, nobody notices, and it calms you down. It relaxes you, you know, or just focusing on an object in a room and just like, and then blocking everything else out and just focusing on that object for a second and just thinking something positive in your head. And that could calm you also. And, you know, and realizing that when people act out and they say really ignorant things, like I said earlier, it's not, it's not us. It's, they have issues within themselves and they behave yes. sometimes the way they do because of their own issues. So don't take things personally. If someone says something really crude, rude, whatever the case may be, don't take it personally, because usually when people say not so nice things it's because they have their own issues and you know with the motherly thing you know it does get annoying i'm telling you i i get that 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 help you know that's that all the time and it, i i they see it in my face now so i think they try to back off a little because i'm just like <laughs> yeah and you know the, the, the thing i could say to um our guests who are listening you know set healthy boundaries for yourself for example, what Stacy was just talking about having um, a relative say something mean to you. I had a relative for many, many years was body shaming me because of being overweight. And she had her own you know, weight problems. She wasn't obese. She was a healthy weight. But I could tell she's never been happy with who she is. Mm -hmm. And she would just pick me apart. You know, you're too fat here. You know, you should be wearing clothes like this. You should be doing this. And it really, you know, hit my self-confidence for the longest of times. And I finally had to tell myself, you know, I eat right. I exercise almost every day. I try to exercise at least five days a week. You know, there's some things with my um, metabolism due to, unfortunately, I have chronic stress because of previous trauma, which led to um, the development of fibromyalgia. It really started a real nasty downward roller coaster and some mm -hmm. auto autoimmune complications. I finally had to say to myself, you know, no one is worth getting sick like this for. Exactly. And I had to stop it. And I told myself, you know what, if all I can do on the holiday is get on Zoom and say, hey, just want to see, you know, want to say happy holidays. I want to know you're doing okay. Or even if it's just sending a text saying, you know, haven't talked in a while, you know, let's talk on this day. Are you going to be free? Just to make an effort. But there's sometimes some of the people in your life it's okay to keep them at, at a distance. Yes. And it's not that you're trying to be mean. It's not no. that you're trying to hurt them. But at the end of the day, you have to think of not just your physical well-being, your emotional and mental, you know, spiritual. There's so many things that bring wellness all together. And just one thing being really off can have just such a toxic effect on the body. Oh, a hundred percent. I think that's an excellent point that you made. You know, sometimes we do have those, those negative people in our life and sometimes we do have to stay away from them, you know, and it's not to be mean. We can send them a postcard on Christmas and, you know, wish them the very best. And you know, on Hanukkah, we can send them, you know, a card out and, and happy Hanukkah and, and, you know, whatever the, whatever, you know, holidays you celebrate, but, you know, you could just send a card out, be nice, be the, be the, the one who's higher 
And but then keep your distance from that person because you you know what people don't realize, but 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And if you yes. stress yourself out, you are breaking down your immune system. And when you break down your immune system, you basically open the doors and say, All right, illnesses, come and get me. And it's not, it's not worth doing that to yourself. And I I've been yeah. that my own victim, you know, getting so stressed out, you know, especially during the holidays and, and it, you just you just open yourself up for more illnesses and sometimes those illnesses that creep in they don't creep out so easily it's not like a oh, cold no. or a virus it could stay with you or it could stay with you for a very long time so is it worth it ask yourself you know yeah. you you are number one is it worth it well I, I in my book that i'm writing right now i'm writing my seventh chapter on um stress and the fear we have of failing you know the toxicity we tend to have on ourselves yes and i found a peer review journal article i'll have to email it to you yeah. and it was so interesting because the researchers said pain is ac actually now one of the main causes of disability and it's because in our society now we have become such a doggy dog society yeah. taking on too much not knowing how to find balance not knowing how to deal with negative emotions or right. stressful challenges we become our own worst enemy we do. and then we get sick and you know they were talking about differences of acute stress versus chronic stress and I developed chronic stress when my one son was having health complications and I haven't been able, I'm still trying to learn to deal with stress. Yeah. And I was reading about the effects of um, the surge at first we have, um, of course, I can't think cortisol. I couldn't think of the word for a moment, you know, in acute stress, we get that surge of cortisol because it's a protected to us. Yeah. When we have chronic, chronic stress, we get that surge, but then it keeps going. And yes. then finally, the body's like, I can't make up enough to keep up with you. Yes. That's when people get hypothyroidism, hormonal imbalance, all sorts of complications. Yes. And they were saying that right there is the beginning stages of it leading to the autoimmune complications that you see long term. So a lot of times we're actually making ourselves sick. We are. Definitely. Definitely. And when I was going through chronic stress, that's exactly what happened. My cortisone level used to be high in the morning and then it would be low at night. You know, at first I had normal cortisone level and then it went to high and then at nighttime it would go back to low. So my doctor was a little concerned, but because it was going back to low, you know, she, she took it more with a little bit of stride. But then when I started going through a lot of stressful situations with family members and other issues, you know, the holidays come in, all that stuff. And, you know, for whatever reason, you know, my cortisone level was high in the morning and it was high at night. And that, that brought a lot of concern to her. And that's exactly what happened. I, my immune system broke down. I started getting sick. A lot of issues were occurring and the chronic stress, it just, it, it stops you. It, it slows your motivation. It slows the way, you know, it, it makes you feel like you, you're, you just don't want to do anything. You know, it could be really chronic mentally and physically to your body. And so yes. you don't want to do that to yourself. So in the holidays, don't get stressed out. You're stressed out enough because you think I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. And then, oh my God, I'm going to see this one. I'm going to see aunt, you know, Elaine, you know, oh my God, I got to deal with her. You know, don't think about that. You know, you know, when you get there, you could just be a casual, hello, how's everything going? Maybe give them a casual hug to, to keep the peace and then just go into the other room or just talk to somebody else and keep your distance. And like we said, you know, there's other methods, you know, and you could even do yoga and meditation before you go and just relax yourself. So That's you an excellent safe, idea. You know, yeah. when you get there, you know, you're not all worked up, you calmed yourself down, you get into the environment and you give yourself a little mental plan. You know what? I'm not going to dwell on it, but if I see so-and-so, I'm going to be nice, but I'm not going to be too close to that person and I'm going to just enjoy the night and make the best of it exactly no and that's what we have to do I mean it's so important like I was saying earlier about establishing healthy boundaries and I mean it, it comes to a point if you have a family member like that you know no one's worth having a seizure over 
you know, if you have to see them in person, it's okay to be high and then say, you know, high and excuse yourself. Mm -hmm. Or if you truly feel, okay, anytime I'm around this person, they upset me to the point where I know I'm going to have a seizure either if I don't that day, the next day or two after. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I hope you're doing well, but unfortunately, I can't come today. Right. And if they have a problem, that's their problem. I and mean, if it's that toxic that, okay, if I go see them, I am going to get sick. Something bad is going to happen. No one's worth that. No. And that's when you have to draw the line and say, you know, I'm thank you so much for the invitation, but you know, unfortunately I won't be able to make it, you know, and you don't have to get, tell them why you could just keep it, you know, and just say, I'm sorry, I can't make it, you know, uh, you know, maybe next time, you know, and, uh, you know, and just thank them for the invitation, you know, and just keep it short and sweet. Sometimes I've, I've learned over the years, too much detail is not a good thing. You know, yes. sometimes brief, blunt to the point, you know, just be, but be brief and be blunt. When I say blunt, I mean, just be, you know, thank you so much for the invite. I really do appreciate it. Unfortunately, I can't make it, but you know, maybe next year, you know, we can, you know, get together during the holidays and just leave it at that as the word maybe was in the sentence, not exactly. I will see you, you know what I mean? And the nice thing now with technology is, let's say you can't go somewhere. You know, I have a lot of friends, you know, still home in New York, friends out here in LA, where if I really need to see them and we can't get together, we get on Zoom like this. Yeah. And we have like a little Zoom get together and we'll talk for a couple hours. And sometimes right. even if you can't physically be with people, but you can have at least someone there in your presence to talk to, Yes, even just that makes a big difference. Definitely. Definitely. And, you know, you could do the same with the holidays. You know, if you don't want to go, you know what, you, you ask somebody, you know, you, you know, um, can I, you know, can you click onto Zoom or FaceTime and let me say hi to everybody, you know, and, you know, that one person, you know, even like a little cousin, you know, they are always, they're so technical, these kids nowadays, they can run around and you can say, hi, so-and-so, hi, everybody says hello, <laughs> you know, and you know what, you kept the peace, you don't look, you don't look like you're trying to be rude, mean, or obnoxious, you said hello to everybody, you get a good feeling, they're feeling good. And the stress isn't there. Yeah. And, you know, I found even with um, him family so far away, my family's still in New York and my in-laws in Germany, sometimes having that long distance, I found we learned to appreciate each other more yes. and, and heal from a lot of things. Whereas when I was around them all the time, I kept thinking, oh my gosh, you guys drive me nuts. I'm like, I'm, re I'm, ready, to, I'm ready to run away. I'm so done. So even just, you know, my in-laws and I will talk once a week on Skype with the um with the kids and then when I took them to um Germany for the first time in May so they could meet their grandparents in yeah. person it really was such a wonderful moment where in the past when we were around each other so much it was like I'd be like ready to take a deep breath and in my mind go I'm not going to lose it today. I'm really yeah. not going to lose it today. She's not going to get under my skin. And of course she did, but <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do what I did in the past. Be positive, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, that, that points it out that, you know what, no, sometimes we could try and we could do our best and it's not going to really turn out that great, but we made the effort, you know, and then, yes. you know what, it, and you know, as long as you need to have a little, a couple of self tech techniques, a little things you could do, focus on the positive, you know, be appreciative that you're with the, around the people you love. Don't focus on the people that you don't, you know, particularly care for. Think about the people that make you happy. And like you said, sometimes when you're around people, you, you tend not to appreciate them as much. And then, you know, unfortunately when they're not around, that's when you appreciate them the most because then you, oh, yeah. you, you realize, you know, one, you know, you, you think about the good, the good stuff about them, you know, and, um, you know, especially when someone passes, we don't think about the negative stuff really anymore. We focus on all the good things that we had with that person's relationship. Well, we need to take that mentality and bring it, you know, to, to reality and, you know, oh, that is the, the truth. present, you know what I mean? And Cause I find when, when people pass away, you know, doesn't matter if it's celebrities or family. That's when I find everybody talks about them in the highest way and everything. And you want to turn to them and go, well, when they were alive, did you tell them the same thing? Yeah. So that's really an excellent point is um, 
it's it's important to have relationships but to make the goal of making them healthy ones you don't want to say you know i love and miss somebody when they're gone you want to be able to enjoy that time with them until it does happen exactly and even like you know having maybe a little common tea you know before you go you know to these places you know um sometimes you know they have a lot of nice supplements that kind of calm calm you but you have to make sure like the common supplements we have to make sure it doesn't collide with our epilepsy medications because there are a lot of supplements that can really make you feel very relaxed but you don't want to feel so relaxed that the next day you feel out of it and you don't want it to interact with your medication so you could get a common tease look at the supplements though and make sure that they don't interact with your medications because there are supplements out there that will you know interact with medications that you know especially you know anti-convulsant medications so it's an option but you got to be a little careful you know and uh you know i've even used passion fruit to to be um to calm me and relax me. And I noticed when I took too much, it made me too tired. And I wasn't, I was past the common zone. I was tired and you don't want that to happen. And now that I'm on Onfi, I think if I took passion fruit, um, passion flower now, I think that it would actually make me completely out of it and knock me out because Onfi is a sedative and and so is passion flower. So, you know, you have yeah. to be careful. So it's an option, but you got to do your homework before you actually, you know, dip into that area. But and if you go to um our website YouTube channel, we recently did some articles and videos on more than natural naturopathic route about things like acupuncture and epilepsy and vitamins and epilepsy excellent I don't, idea I don't, yeah i don't know if I, I don't think we have the video up yet for the vitamins and epilepsy but it is on the blog the article and anything i could say because i've used supplements over the years you know pre-covid before i got real sick i was involved in power lifting and i'm slowly getting there again mm-hmm. but i was always very pro supplement and you really want to, you know, some will tell you on the back if you should be, you should be careful for um things like heart or your heart or epilepsy and things. Not all do. And yeah. I just tell people the best advice I give to people when it comes to supplements. And I'm not a doctor. This is myself from being yeah. in, in fitness and training in martial arts. If you really don't understand what's on the back of the label, don't research it. it before you buy it. If yeah. you don't know it, if you're doubting something, that's the red flag right there. Mm-hmm. Don't take it until you know it. Because exactly. there's times I took something and I thought, oh, I'm okay. I was lucky it didn't trigger me to um have a seizure. But yeah, I forget the one ingredient. It's in some of the um, it's not caffeine based, it's more um natural, but it acts like a natural caffeine. Yeah. And when I was taking it, I have to say the um I got the effects I wanted, my body fat percentage was going down. But it was burning so much through my body. It was burning my Tegretol as well. Oh, so yeah. it was bringing my Tegretol levels down without me even realizing it. And yeah. I had a real nasty aura the one morning. And I'm like, oh, that was out of the ordinary. I haven't had anything like that in a long time. Right. And I took a couple of days to rest. And my gut just told me, because I hadn't been using the product that long, my gut's yeah. like, I better look up a couple of things. And when I took the bottle over and I looked up the one ingredient, they said, you know, pretty much what happened to me is what, you know, it did what it was supposed to do. The the vitamin was working the way it should it, but I wasn't the person who should have been taking that vitamin. Exactly. Yeah. So you want to make sure I just tell anyone, if you don't understand it, something at the back, something that doesn't make sense, don't put it in you. But we have in the article, we have a list of um, different supplements that are actually very good for people with epilepsy. And then the second part of the article says stuff you should stay away from in the research they've done on why you shouldn't be taking it. And I also think a great idea would be to pamper yourself before you go to these events. You're so stressed out. You're thinking so much probably about going that you're all stressed. What about if you went and got your nails done or maybe got a pedicure or you get a little massage to relax yourself and oh, then, absolutely. you know, and then you go either the next day or you go that day, depending if you can get in for a massage that will relax you and calm you, you know, and, uh, you know, they even have, you know, if, if you're able to purchase one, they have chairs that have, have the massage in it, you know, or, you know, just to, you know, try to do things that help, you know, bring calmness, you know, and then 
go to the event, you know, yeah. and clear your mind and don't think. Our biggest problem as humans, we think too much. Don't think, live in the moment. Yeah. Just take it day by day, minute by minute. Don't think about the what ifs. Think about now. You're in the now moment. And some of the things I used to do when I um, would go visit family for holidays in the evening, and I thought I knew one or two people would be there that, where I'd be happy to see them, but the sooner I could leave, the better. <laughs> <laughs> I would in the morning before getting up and, and getting going. Yeah. I literally allow myself to have a jammy morning. I wouldn't yeah. rush. If I knew I didn't have to be somewhere until the afternoon, i just do what I could to be relaxed. Sometimes even just sitting in your jammies in your favorite chair or on the couch yes. and putting something on TV that makes you happy. Yeah, you're not up and going, but sometimes we need that. Sometimes just sitting down saying, you know what? I need 30 minutes by myself. I'm putting my feet up. I'm just doing this and I'm not Perfect. worried about what anyone else is doing. Exactly. Sometimes that's all it takes. And one big thing I've learned too is don't fall into their traps. I think sometimes you, if you know, no matter what you say is not going to make a difference stop let yes. them do the talking let them say whatever they want don't keep interacting and don't keep coming back with something because you're never going to win and you're only going to work yourself up and then the possibility to have a seizure is right there so yeah. if someone is you know constantly saying you know they they keep saying you did this wrong da 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 ba 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 you know just let it go you know what? You're yeah. not going to win the war. So why even bother to fight? You know what I'm saying? It, it's worthless. It's meaningless. So don't fall into the trap. Just say, okay, you know, and then, you know, just kind of walk away if you can. Yeah. And that's the best advice right there. I could say, because I found in the past when I would try to dispute something or try to justify something. Yeah. That's what they're looking for. Some people, yes. that's where they get their energy. They do. And I, I have one relative where the moment you do that, it's almost like she hooks you. And before yes. you know it, there's a fight mm -hmm. and she's gotten her satisfaction. Sometimes, even if you don't agree with someone and you just go, okay, sounds good. And yeah. you leave it there. They don't know what to do. They just yes. like, they're wait, they're waiting for the confrontation. They're like, waiting wait a minute. for it. You're not giving me the negativity I wanted. That I can't throw anything negative back at you. You're not giving me the tool I need. Exactly. And sometimes that's all it takes to stop them is go, Okay, sounds good. Or, yeah, you're right. Okay, and walk away. That exactly. right there is a, a more powerful weapon at times. Yes, and I have a couple of people in my family, and I have a few friends that thrive off of confrontation. They actually try to get the screwdriver, and they know what your trigger points are. They know what's oh, going to yeah. make you go off. And for some reason, instead of keeping your mouth shut and not trying to cause a confrontation, they're purposely trying to just like get you going. They're trying to like get you, you know, get underneath your skin and they want you to get into an argument with them because they thrive off of it. Some people and I, and love, I love to it. fight. That's what I was going to say. And then I love once the fight starts, they're going, well, why are you being like this to me? Yes. Why are you so upset with me? And I'm thinking, uh, this isn't rocket science. <laughs> this isn't rocket science. I know why this is going on. I know yes. why I'm reacting the way I am. Yes. And they know too, you know, deep down inside, you know, some people just, you know, they love confrontation, you know, and it probably stems from their childhood, but whatever the case, if you have people like that in your family, don't fall into their trap. Don't mm -hmm. fall into it. You know, you know, you got to walk on eggshells with them, unfortunately. And you just have, you know what to say and you know what not to say and don't, don't fall into it and just say, okay, just like you said, okay, you know, and that's it. No, but, you know, with, with everything coming up for uh, the end of the year and new year, mm -hmm. if anything, I know it's early, but one thing I've been doing already is thinking about what can I do to better myself for the new year. Yes. And, I'm, and I'm not even thinking of it as a new year's re resolution because I can't stand those, <laughs> especially when I have friends who are telling me, oh, I'm going to lose 50 pounds and two weeks later, yeah. we're, go we're going out for pizza. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, it, la it lasted 13 days. Okay. That's good. We try. I always break my <laughs> resolutions. I try, but I never... <laughs> Yeah. so i'm trying to <laughs> i'm trying to make it where i'm trying to um set goals where it's going to benefit my overall well-being but yeah. i'm doing it 
at the end of the day, any of these things you do when it comes to, you know, setting boundaries, when it comes to being with family or dealing with stress or anything like that, you know your body at the end of the day better than anybody else. I mean, 100%. I've even told my doctors that I understand they're educated. I understand they have the information and can advise. But when I wake up every day and I go to sleep every night, I know what's going on. Yes. And so because, you know, as humans, we know that set goals and boundaries for yourself to better yourself at your pace. Don't worry about what anyone else is thinking. If you see them for the holidays and they're like, well, when are you going to start doing this? When you're ready to do it. If you're yes. not ready to do something or you don't feel it's right, then you don't do it. Yes. And you could basically even tell them that. Say, you know what? Now is not the right time for me, you know, but thank you for, you know, being concerned. But I think I need to handle this the way that's best for me. But thank yes. you, you know, and then just, again, walk away. Don't stay there. Don't listen for the response. Just excuse yourself nicely and walk away. Yeah. So I think we we really, you know, we, we hit some really good, you know, um, pointers. I think everybody that's listening to this can relate, you know, because we all have people in our family and we all have friends that, you know, as much as you may love them, they also can, you know, at the same time, you know, it's like a, a love hate relationship basically. And, you know, and you know, you're going to see them under in the holidays, but you have to just, you know, deal with it. And if you want, if it's too stressful, then you don't go and you just do what Natalie said. You excuse yourself nicely in a nice way, FaceTime the family, you know, or send them a, you know, send them a card, you know, for the holidays, just keep the peace. And, you know, be the higher one and don't let other people get to you. Because when it comes to the end of the day, the only person that's going to suffer is you and you don't want to suffer. You know, you want to be at your best and you want to try to be seizure free. And if you are seizure free, you want to stay seizure free. Because remember, our condition doesn't go away. And if we don't take care of ourselves, it could easily come back for people who are seizure free. And for people who have seizures, it could get worse. So why put yourself in a bad zone where you could actually infringe hurt on yourself? You know, we have to think about ourselves. Like Natalie said, listen to your bodies because our bodies are always talking to us. It's time to pay attention and do what it says. Do you have anything else you want to close with, Natalie? No, I think you you summed it up really good. But no, at the what I what I found hard, I tell everybody, but I find hard to uh, do myself is is self love. So yes. you know, with all these things, if there's any advice I can give with close closing this is do what you can in times like this to practice some self love and not allow others toxicity to be around you. Just yes. remind yourself at the end of the day, you do matter. Exactly. 100%. And for anyone who's interested, I write about that in my book, Empower Yourself. And I talk about self-love because self-love is so important to heal yourself and to better yourself and to move forward in life. So I sell it. If you want to look up Empower Yourself on Amazon, it's there. I talk about my epilepsy in it too. And I talk about accepting yourself, loving yourself, caring for yourself and all the other good stuff that goes with it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you are the most important thing that matters and you need to take care of yourself. You need to love yourself because we have, we have one life on this planet as well, you know, as, as, from what I know, and you want to make the best of it. So listen, guys, have a great holiday. Enjoy yourself for Thanksgiving. Enjoy yourself for the for Christmas and Hanukkah and for the new year. And we are going to be seeing you soon because you're not going to get rid of us that easy because we're coming <laughs> back. We're coming yes. back with a new topic and we have a great topic planned for you on the next one that Natalie and I were talking about. So see us next week as we go on to help you with more issues about epilepsy and how to cope with it. Thanks so Thank much for visiting us. Thanks everyone. Have a great one. You too.